Hello everybody, Max with A1 Website Pro here, and today we're going to be learning about taking our entries from Summer Note, whatever the user enters, and saving it into a database. And so we're going to do this with Ajax and jQuery and all the goody stuff. So uh, there's no intros in my video, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you what you're going to be learning here. So here's a, a Summer Note thing that I have, and I've uh, taught you guys how to do this in, uh, yesterday in the day before's tutorial and we'll just go ahead and make a heading and then this is some text maybe another heading this is some more text okay and we'll go ahead and use our magic make a header do make this header one get rid of the extra space and when I hit save it's going to save it to a database and it's going to echo out new record created successfully. Now I have another file called display and I'm going to refresh that and you can see here that we can see the entries. Now if I go back to summer note we'll just put uh, one two three and at the end of this heading and hit save hit refresh you can see that it's echoing out the HTML that we put in summer note here okay so without further ado what we're gonna do is uh, in our PHP my admin I already created summer note 2 here so what you'll do is you'll uh, go to the home select new database and type in summer note okay and then when you get the summer note you gonna need to create uh, three columns and we'll just call these entries just like so and you select go the first one is just going to be the ID number and over here toward the end we're going to make this auto increment so we'll just select auto increment and then that away whenever it's counting the entries it will go one two three in consecutive order this one here we'll just type in content like so and now for the content we're just going to put, set it to text because varchar only holds 250 characters and we could run out of space especially using a text uh, editor like summer note this last one we'll just put it in a timestamp and we'll select oh I'll go down here by date and time and select timestamp all right after you have those entered just like that you hit save and now we have our database set up and ready to go all right so uh what we want to do in our uh a, on our server is create another uh, folder and call it here let me go ahead and bring this over here so you can see what i'm doing here and i have quick access to ht docs up here and inside here I created a folder called summer note 2 and if we go in there and there there's nothing in there right now but we want to make three files okay but I already have uh, our, my atom set up here so all I need to do is click add folder and go to HT Docs summer note 2 hit select folder now I want to create an index file index dot PHP just like so I want to create a save file like we had before only this save is going to be different from the last one if you've been following along in the tutorials and finally I want to create a display dot PHP file just like so okay so first things first let's go to the index file and uh, you know what I'm just gonna copy all this code and paste it in there and go over it with you okay so we start out with doc type HTML we set the HTML language to English uh, we have our head tag here now notice when I hit the head tag it shows us where the closing tag is we start here with a UTF-8 character encoding which is universal the title is summer note uh, we should say time summer note with my sequel okay and then here's the necessary links that we need uh, we start out, of course, with the CSS first and the scripts later. You could do it like this, but to avoid confusion, like I told you before, you always want to have 
the CSS declared first. You want those scripts brought in first, and then you can bring in the uh, JavaScripts. Okay, here we have our jQuery, we have our Bootstrap JavaScript, and our Summer Internet JavaScript. And on top, we just have our, our Bootstrap and then our Summer Note CSS files. We start with a body uh, tag here, and we have a heading of Summer Note MySQL. Well, I guess if we at SQL is the way they like to have it there. Start out with my form tag, and you can see where the closing form tag in it. And this time, instead of a div, I have text area. Okay, so that's important because now we're going to be submitting this form. The ID is editor, just like before, and the name is editor data. Uh, this really doesn't mean anything. We could actually take that out of there. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and leave it in there because it's always a, a, a good practice to name it. Uh, finally, we have our button, and its ID is still save hyphen button. It's labeled as save. Here, this is something new for you. It's a div ID of display. And basically, whenever we submit this form via AJAX, it's going to go to this save file. And I'll show you what we're putting in there. And it's going to echo out back into this display div. Now we start with our scripts. This should all look familiar to you. Document ready function. And we're targeting the editor. And we're putting summer note in that editor right here okay text area we're setting the height to 300 when they click the save button which is located right here this button then we're gonna have this click function fire off and we're gonna target the editor whatever content whatever values are in the editor ID up here in the text area and we're gonna store that in a JavaScript variable called editor. So we're taking the editor out and storing it as editor. Just to keep us, uh, I mean, we could name this whatever we want, but we, it makes sense being called editor, doesn't it? So we take that variable and we put it in another variable called a data string. Okay, so this variable is right here. And then we're going to store that as editor1 in the post variables. Like whenever this gets posted to the save page, we're sending this all this information over to the save page. All right. Now, if editor doesn't have any content in it, we're going to target the display div ID and ask the people, please enter some content. So if they just go to the text area and they don't submit and they click this button and nothing's in there, we want them to we want the the DOM to say back, hey, you need to enter some content in there. Else, now if they did enter some content, and you can always put this like this, sometimes I do that. Else we're gonna call the Ajax. We're gonna make the Ajax call. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna uh, have a type of post and we're going to send it to the save.php and we're going to have this data string attached okay so this data string up here is going to be submitted to the save.php we're setting the cache to false now whenever it's successful like whenever it goes over and it comes back goes over the save php and comes back into this file we're going to call this function result. And we're going to target that display div, that exact same display div. Uh, when we are talking about this one here. But now we're going to display the results, the HTML results, from the save page. Okay? And then finally, we're going to close out all our tags and put return false. And that's the end of our script. We close out our body tag and our HTML. Okay? So let's save this. And we'll go over here instead of summer note, it's going to be summer note 2. And we can see we have our summer note MySQL. Now, if I hit save here, notice what it says. Please enter some content because I haven't entered anything in there yet, right? But it, even if I did enter something into it, it, it wouldn't go anywhere. So if I type test and I hit save, 
you can see that we're not getting anything back. We're not getting any information back here. And that's because we need to uh, edit this save PHP. Now let me go ahead and grab that information. It's not too bad. It's not too extensive. At the very first line, we're making a connection to the database, okay, called localhost. Uh, the, the username's root. There is no password, but if you had a password, you would enter it in there. Like if it was on a server, a real server, it's just my local server. And the database name is called Summer Note 2 now, right? So if we go look at our database, Summer Note 2, this is this is where we're going to be entering those entries right there. And now you can see that it's empty. There's nothing in here yet. All right. So we, after we make the connection to the database, we're going to store it in a variable called con. Now, whenever we, you'll remember editor one is coming over in this data string here. Okay. So that's one of the post variables. We're going to use MySQLE real escape string to sanitize the information coming over. So if somebody's trying to put a JavaScript, uh, you know, injection or whatever, they won't be able to do that because we're going to escape all the strings there. Okay. This is just the connection to our database. But we're taking all of this and we're going to store it in a variable called content. Okay. Now, one of the things that we need to do is we want, we need to encode this. This is an extra layer of security. And what it does is it takes all those scripts, like the arrow to the left, arrow to the right, and so on and so forth. And it encodes them in a uh, HTML. Okay? So it's going to be all coded before we send it to the database. Now we're going to insert the entries into content in the database. And this is, let me go ahead and go to the structure here, content. See, it's going into that content. So that's where we're inserting the entries into. And now this variable of content is all this post variables right here, okay? So the, that's going to be the value, whatever they send over. Now we're going to start out with an if statement. If the connection to the SQL equals true, we're going to echo out new record created successfully. Else, we're going to show them the MySQL error, like if there's an error in the connection. And then finally, we're going to close our connection. All right, not too bad, not too many lines of code. I mean, you could get a lot more extensive there if you like. So let's go ahead and uh, save this file. And right here in the content, we're going to look for whenever we submit to see if there's anything in there. So let's go ahead and do a heading here, some text here, another heading more text. Okay, and we'll go ahead and get our code or our HTML editor going here. And right here we can see the code. See, that's the code that's going to be inserted into the database. So let's hit save. It says new record created successfully. And that target that, uh, that display div ID and put that in there. Now let's look at our database. If we go to entries, now we can see the encoding that was in there. See how it uses the ampersand, LT, and semicolons and stuff like that. It's encoding everything because this is safe to store in your database, you know. Okay, well let's go ahead and we'll make a, another heading, maybe heading 22, and then hit save and check our entries once again now we have see how it's the ids are growing in chronological order and then we have this here all right now to display this information to your users we're going to go to summer note 
2. And we created the file, but there's nothing in there. So let's go ahead and code this display file. All right. Now, I included some information in here just in case you guys are ha have any trouble. But uh, basically, what these first three lines do is if there's any errors in your code, it's going to tell you about it. Okay? So that's always good practice. Once again, here I have my connection to the database. But we want to connect to database summer note 2. Okay? If the connection, uh, if we have an error in the connection, we're going to make the script die and let them let you know that the connection failed and then we're going to give you the connection error message else we could echo out connected successfully but we actually don't have to have that we can actually take that out of there that's kind of corny you don't need to show everybody that right now we're going to uh, get our results here's our query we're going to select all from entries okay so everything in entries, we're going to store in the result. And now we're going to fetch the association with this while loop. We're going to take the results and put them in a row variable. One of the things that we need to do is because they're encoded in the database, we need to decode them. And that's what this HTML entity decode does. We take the row of content, all those things in the all those entries in those rows, we decode them, and then we're going to store them in a, a variable called decoded string, and then we're going to output the decoded string like this, echo decoded string. And then we're just going to put a horizontal rule to let, let us give us some separation. Finally, we're going to close out this while loop. Notice it's highlighted here and here. And then finally, we close out our connection, and end our PHP script. So let's go ahead and hit save. And let's go back to our display.php uh, script and we'll refresh it. And here we can see our headings. Okay? So as simple as that. So let me go ahead and test this out. We won't put any more uh, coding. We'll just hit save and then refresh so you can see how it's coming in. Now, if you guys are having any trouble uh, or you need any more help, don't hesitate to uh, make a message uh, below. Uh, uh, send me a, a question, answer on a website. You can get all these scripts absolutely free in the uh, link in the description of this video. So you guys could learn how to take your summer notes and put them into your database. Hey, this is Max, once again, with A1 Website Pro. Uh, thanks for spending your time with me. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video tutorial.